Good morning and welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday of Easter. Also Memorial Day weekend, a bit of a different Memorial Day weekend than we have experienced in the past. And a lot of folks typically are out and about and traveling this weekend, maybe not so much this year, but regardless, I hope that you are well and safe and stay safe if in fact you are traveling. I want to thank Linda Gravine for being with us here to accompany us in the uh, hymns today, so I appreciate that. And on our prayers, let's pray, continue to pray for David Hovey as he recovers from his hospital stay and rehabilitation, for Harriet Warner as she is currently in rehabilitation, Lori Prochnow, who's undergoing a series of medical tests, and Patsy Askew, who is at home, recovering from her hospital stay and still struggling with a few health issues, so keep her in our prayers as well. So we begin our worship service with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Gathered as a faithful yet imperfect community in Christ, let us confess our sin. Gracious God, in Christ Jesus you come among us as light shining in the darkness. We confess our failure to welcome this light. Forgive us and renew our hope so that we may live in the light of your grace and welcome the truth of Christ the Lord. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is raised a Savior, Christ the Lord, in whom all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is, coincidentally enough, Gather Us In, hymn 532, and we'll sing two verses of that hymn. 532, Gather Us In. <laughs> Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of eternity, your Son, Jesus Christ, lived among us, died at the hands of willful power, ascended to your right hand, and lives among us still. Unite us with Christ and with each other, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue our worship with the reading of God's Word. Good morning, St. John family. The reading for today is from 1st Acts, chapter 6 to 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to heaven? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his authority, 
but you will receive power when the Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And next we hear the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. We continue in John the discourse that Jesus has with his disciples the night before he is executed. And it's a pretty long, uh, long uh, speech that Jesus is giving. And this is a continuation of that. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And I invite any children among us to please come forward for a message. Uh, you can just gather up front here, sit on, the, uh, sit on the steps. I'll have to just kind of lean over and you can turn and face me. That'll be fine. That'll work. I can't leave the camera, so we'll have to kind of work through the logistics of it. But please come forward. It's been a while since we've had an opportunity to chat. So come forward and have a seat. Good to see you. Good to see how you're doing. How are you doing? It's been kind of a weird time, hasn't it? Staying at home, trying to get along with mom and dad and your brothers and your sisters. And if you're in school, all this online school stuff, it's kind of, kind of been a different time, isn't it? But one thing that we know in the midst of this time and other times like it, that God in Jesus Christ is still with us. So this morning, I'm going to begin with a question for you, as I often do. And I want you to tell me, if you can, what this is. And I'll get it even closer to you so you get a good look at it. Anybody have any idea what this is? Anybody? Yes. A slot car track from the 1960s. Okay, that's an interesting, rather obscure observation, but no, sorry, not correct. Anybody else have any ideas what this is? One more quick look. 
Yeah, yes. A figure eight, it is a figure eight, but it's a special figure eight. As you look at it, it is a figure eight that has no beginning and it has no end. And this is the symbol for infinity. Infinity, which means kind of the same thing as eternity. It's measureless, it's timeless, it has no beginning, and it has no end. And in today's Bible story that you just heard, Jesus was talking to us, wasn't he, about eternity. And as Christians, we often, when we think of eternity, if we think of things that are infinite, that have no beginning or have no end, we think about eternal life. So what exactly is eternal life? And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the sermon today. But Jesus tells us pretty basically that eternal life is knowing the love of God. And just like this symbol, God's love for us is infinite. You can't measure it. It has no beginning and it has no end. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? So, as you go out into this week, whatever this new one looks like for you, keep that in mind. And I know that things are different. They're, they're more difficult than they probably have been before. But remember that even in the midst of times like these, God's infinite love is always with you. Let's pray and you can repeat after me. Dear Lord, even though times are different, we thank you for this day. And help me, Lord, to know that your love has no end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for coming up. I appreciate it. You can head back to wherever you were sitting, and we'll continue with our sermon for the day, which pretty much the same message that I just shared with the young people. Anybody have any slot cars in the 1960s? Anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? Probably not. Nobody's as old as I am. But the question that I asked of the young people, and I'm going to ask you, is what is eternal life? The standard definition of that seems to be that eternal life is what happens to us after we die. Specifically and hopefully what happens to us after we die and go to heaven. But in the story from Acts, as the disciples have witnessed Jesus' ascension and they're gazing skyward, two angels appear to them and ask this question of the disciples. Why do you stand looking up? toward heaven? Good question. It's a good question for the disciples and for us. And by the way, I neglected to mention that you heard that reading from the story in Acts from Jan Miller, who is our guest lector this morning, and I appreciate that. So again, a question that can be legitimately asked of us, just as it was the disciples, why do we stand looking up to heaven? Is that where eternal life exists? Well, from an ancient understanding of the world, yeah. God is good and is up there. The devil and bad are down there and we're struggling away in between somewhere. And if you're good enough, when you die, you go up there. And if you're bad enough, when you die, you go down there. And that's an ancient understanding of the world. However, as I opined during my Wednesday Bible study, I don't think that understanding is necessarily helpful anymore. Now, I understand it's Genesis. Back in early Christianity, the lives of most people was a struggle. One author referred to it as brutish, nasty, and short. So dying and going to heaven offered some relief something to look forward to. And I understand that 
people today still cling to that notion because their lives too may be a real struggle. And this promise of heaven and the afterlife offers them some final relief and something to look forward as well. Nonetheless, I still think, and you may not agree with me, but I think this is an outdated understanding of our relationship to life in general and our relationship to God in specific. If nothing else, if nothing else, I invite you this morning to take this opportunity to just think about it a little bit. Think about this whole idea of eternal life. As I've said before, God is timeless. God is infinite. God is eternal. God is timeless. But our understanding of God and our articulation of that understanding can never be timeless because we are perfect, imperfect rather, human beings. But you say, who cares, Pastor Dan, what you think? Well, tell you what Jesus thinks. Let's hear what he has to say, as was recorded in his prayer to his father in the Gospel of John that we just heard. Now, Jesus is speaking in the third person, referring to himself when he says in this prayer, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And this is eternal life, says Jesus, that they may know you. So what does that mean? Well, I think in other words, it means that eternal life is knowing God revealed to us as Christians in Jesus Christ. Here again, what Jesus has to say just a few verses ahead in the Gospel of John. I made your name known to them. Again, he's still in this prayer to God. I made your name known to them so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them. I have made your name known to them, Jesus says, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them. So that you may know love which is infinite, love which is eternal, love which has no beginning and no end, honest and genuine love for yourself for others, and love from and for your God. So, we end where we begin. What is eternal life? Is eternal life living forever up in some place in the sky? Could be. I don't know for sure, and neither do you. However, I'm really not sure how helpful that... Uh, it is to nurture that notion of an understanding of life and God and the universe. And maybe, just maybe, Jesus was right when he said, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Amen. We will continue our worship by singing two verses of the hymn of the day, Son of God, Eternal Savior, which is ELW 655.
even though we are unable to gather together physically as a community, we still have the opportunity to uh, hold on to some of the things that make worship important for us, like singing. You can be singing these hymns at home or singing them throughout the week if you wish. Uh, we can be reading scripture and trying to understand more of what God means for us in our lives, and we can pray. Maybe this is a good time for us to revitalize our prayer lives. So with that in mind, this morning we come to our Lord with prayers of intercession for the world, the church, and all those in need as we respond to Lord in your mercy with hear our prayer. So we pray. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Bless your church around the world and bless your church here in this place as we name this morning Maxwell Noss, Zach Trulin, Brian Anderson, Aline Hovey, Dwayne Miller, Dan Dietert, Morgan Boltz, Braxton Borth, Ray Gallenberg, Veronica Levesque, Briella Greenberg, and Selena Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, continue to open our eyes to the wonder of your creation, which we see in a plump robin perched on a budding bough, which we see in billions of stars in a swirling galaxy, galaxy viewed through the lens of the Hubble telescope, in which we see in the spirit of love among those who look to your Son for guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, shine the light of justice into all the cracks and crevices where victims of the coronavirus have fallen out of sight and out of mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, come to the aid of your children. We pray for those who grieve, those without supportive families, those who are isolated, anxious, or afraid, and those who are ill or recovering from illness, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. This morning we pray for Lori, Patsy, David, Harriet, and all those we now bring to you, Lord, in the silence of our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, we are grateful for all those who gave their lives in service to this country. Let us pay our respects to them by honoring this nation, not with the casual ease of trite cliches and self-centered agendas, but rather through genuine care and participation for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, help us to trust in the reality of eternal life, life which begins here and now and continues in a connection to the universe which abides forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, gracious God, we place all for whom we pray into your care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Continue our worship with our offering. And again, I want to thank you very much for your continuing support of St. John financially and with your time and talents and otherwise. I do. It's tough. It's tough when we can't be together and the church ends up kind of being this ethereal thing out there. But we're still here. We're still a faithful community in Christ. And I appreciate your continuing support. And we pray. Giving, Lord, our ordinary gifts sometimes seem small in the grand scheme of things. But you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. 
So feed us again, Lord, at this table that we may be strengthened through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you again for stopping by and joining us this morning. I appreciate that. Again, I appreciate Linda helping out and Jan with the reading. Thank you all for being here today. We will have Wednesday Bible study next Wednesday and, of course, worship service next Sunday. And I'll just let you know that council is going to be meeting probably next week sometime to, again, take a look at what's happening, the latest things that are going on, develop a plan for St. John, and then communicate that plan to you folks. So we're not just silly, sitting here twiddling our thumbs, waiting for something to happen. We are actually planning, taking steps, and... Uh, you know, of course, everything is subject to change the way this thing is going, but uh, we'll hopefully soon have a plan, at least a tentative one, that we'll be uh, sharing with you all. So, anybody got any questions? Anything else? Okay. Oh, remember, use your head, wash your hands, keep the faith, wear a mask if you think it's appropriate to do so, and we will conclude by singing our Ending song, a fan favorite. We'll sing two verses of hymn 536, God Be With You Till We Meet Again. <laughs>
Now go forth into the world to serve with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.